My name is Michael Critzen. I'm a professor for evolutionary anthropology and genomics at the University of Zurich. And I've been working on orangutans since my arrival here in Zurich, which was, you know, more than a decade ago. My group, but also with collaborators, you know, from, from multiple international institutions, from Indonesia, from the US, from the UK, from Spain and other countries, revealed, you know, that there are actually not two orangutan species, but three orangutan species. On this panel, we see the both previously described orangutan species, Pongo abilii on the left, and Pongo pygmaeus on the right. And in the center panel, uh, there are photos of the newly discovered species Pongo tapanuliensis. Here we see the distribution of uh, the genus Pongo. In Borneo we have Pongo pygmaeus with several subspecies. Then in Sumatra we've got the newly described species Pongo tapanuliensis in yellow, which occurs in an isolated population south of Lake Toba. And to the north of Lake Toba we have Pongo abilii. When you look at the animals, uh, just, you know, if you look at the, the fur, they, they seem to be slightly different, but that probably would not be enough to call them a novel species. There are significant differences in the skull and dental morphology of Pongo tapanuliensis compared to Pongo abelii and to Pongo pygmaeus. Uh, in figure 1c, we show the first several principal components of 26 craniomandibular characters. And uh, the holotype skull of uh, Pongo tapanuliensis uh, is shown in the black horizontal lines. And it's evident from this analysis that for some principal components, Pongo tapanuliensis is either outside the range or close to the uh, border of the range of previously described orangutan species. Some very complex modeling based on whole genome data showed that there are actually three independent evolutionary lines. The genomic diversity and population structure of the genus Pongo is based on 37 genome data as shown in figure 2b and c. A principal component analysis shown in figure 2b shows that 34.2% of the variation is explained by separating the Sumatran orangutans from the Borneans. And 3.6% of the variation is explained by se uh, separating Pongo abelii north of Lake Toba from Pongo tapaniliensis south of Lake Toba. The admixture analysis shown in figure 2c supports our findings from the PCA. When we brought together the genomic evidence and the morphological evidence, it became clear that the orangutans from Batangturu, from this isolated population, constitute a new great ape species. We tested this by looking at different split sequences as shown in figure 3a. And a scenario where Batangturu, or Pongo tapanuliensis, constitutes the oldest line followed by a split uh, to the, of the populations north of Lake Toba and then by a split uh, by the, of the born in orangutans shows by far the highest support. If we then look at the parameter estimates which are shown in uh, figure 3b, we can estimate that the split between the populations south of Lake Toba and to, uh, the ones to the north occurred roughly 3.38 million years ago, and then the Borneans split off from the population south of Lake Toba uh, roughly 674,000 years ago. However, there has been male-mediated gene flow between these different lineages for quite some time. When we estimated relative cross-coalescent rates as shown in figure 3c, we could actually determine that the gene flow between the population south of Lake Toba, so Pongo tapanoliensis, and the populations north of Lake Toba, Pongo abelii, has ceased 10 to 20,000 years ago. The complex demographic history of the genus Pongo is also echoed by our figure 4. In figure 4a we show the phylogenetic relationships based on mitochondrial genomes. And the striking point here is that the Batangtoro population, or Pongo tapanoliensis, in light yellow is actually closer, more closely related to Bornean populations than to other Sumatran populations. If we look at the phylogenetic relationships based on Y-chromosomal sequence data, we see that Batangtoro is well embedded within the Sumatran cluster. We know from behavioral and also from previous genetic data that this can best be explained by very strong male bias gene flow in orangutans. However, as our autosomal modeling showed, that gene flow has ceased 10 to 20,000 years ago. 
With only 800 individuals left in the wild, Pongo tapanuliensis is amongst the most endangered great ape species. And anthropogenic pressure on the habitat in which Pongo tapanuliensis occurs is massive. Habitat conversion, mining and proposals to build a hydroelectric dam are currently threatening this newly discovered great ape species. <laughs>